Welcome back to Sword Box Ministries. Thanks for checking out our Monday video. Today Mickey continues his story on Samson. Our verse for the day is found in Proverbs 2, 6. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Welcome back to Sword Box. When we left our story of Samson uh, Saturday, he had just been with a harlot. Philistines had found out where he was and they had waited and uh, waited for him to come out so that they could kill him but Samson uh, snuck through their trap pulled up the city gate took it to the top of the hill and kind of mockingly let everyone see the kind of power he has that's all we're told of this particular story in the life of Samson the very next verse in Judges chapter 16 4 says afterward it happened that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah and again, I believe this, this woman is not an Israelite. It would also appear, as we will soon see, that Samson is more than likely not honoring God with this relationship. Uh, he obviously stays in her town, perhaps even living with her. Uh, they certainly didn't have cell phones or laptops or anything like that in which to communicate. And the text will show that they were in communication daily. Now in the verse 5, And the lords of the Philistines came up to her, came up to Delilah, and said to her, Entice him, find out where his great strength lies, and by what means we may overpower him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And every one of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. No threats were made that were recorded, just a bribe. And I doubt that the Philistines would have seen a need to bribe an Israelite woman since uh, they were in bondage to the Philistines. You know, sin grows, it spreads, it pulls us deeper and deeper towards death like we talked about last week. Samson has a real problem with women, and now he's with a woman who is being bribed with a, with a pretty good fortune to betray him into the hands of the Philistines. You know, God doesn't force us to do the right thing. He doesn't force us to make the right choices. He leads us, he guides us, and he'll even equip us. But if we choose not to follow him, and if we choose to please ourselves, then we can't blame God for the mess that is sure to follow. We're told that Samson loved Delilah. You know, we can love the wrong things, and when it comes to romantic relationships, we can love the wrong people. If you remember way back in the beginning, uh, Samson's parents wanted him to find a wife among his own people, people who serve the one and true God. And while God used Samson's desire for this Philistine woman, uh, it ended up costing Samson his first wife. It would appear that he didn't really learn a whole lot from these lessons. He went and had relations with a harlot, and now he's in love with someone being paid to betray him. If money can buy a person with lying, tricking, and sacrificing you, they don't love you. And Delilah did not love Samson, as we will soon see. We don't betray those we love, and we don't sell them out. But Samson has put himself in a bad situation. Perhaps he thinks he can do as he pleases without consequences. After all, he got away with it when he was with a harlot. Uh, maybe he justifies his actions. You know, after all, a man has needs, and he loves her. Shouldn't that make everything okay? Well, it doesn't make everything okay. And in verse 6, Delilah goes right to work. So Delilah says to Samson, Please tell me where your great strength lies and by what you may be bound to afflict you. I mean, there's no hesitation with her. She's right to work. Uh, she could have warned him. She could have told the Philistines that uh, she was afraid. And instead, she begins to pry into Samson's secrets, finding out what his great strength is over the enemy. You know, this is very similar to an incident uh, in Samson's life in his first marriage ceremony where his... His wife pressed him to find out the, the meaning of the riddle. You know, obviously Samson has poor taste in character when it comes to his choice for women. They may please him physically, but they are not loyal to him. They're quick to betray him. You would hope that the kind of questions Delilah was asking would maybe raise a red flag in Samson's mind. You know, something's not quite right. But not only can love blind us, sin can blind us too. And when we're in love with our sin... The devil can walk up to us and smack us in the forehead with a two-by-four, and we can't figure out where the pain's coming from. What's going on is that we've subjected ourselves to the enemy. Not God. We did it. We ignored the Word of God, and we ignore the spiritual laws of God. We did it our way. Proverbs 4.19 says, The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. And that's exactly what's happening to Samson. When we do this, not only will we hurt ourselves, but other people as well. And the ripple effect can touch a lot of lives. You know, we can't avoid every attack from the enemy. We can be at the center of God's will and still be under se severe attack from the enemy. Job was, Paul was, Jesus always was under attack from the enemy. And yet more often than not, it's our own decisions and our own choices that land us in hot water. You know, God wants us to walk wisely. He wants us to listen to him 
and walk uprightly. We are stewards of this life we've been given. Uh, at salvation, we give it all to Jesus, and then we take up our cross daily and we follow him. Uh, but this story kind of depresses me, you know, to see Samson being played like a fool, trapped in his own desires, and unfortunately for him, it's going to get much, much worse. But I want to leave, leave you with some wise instruction from God as well about this very sort of thing. Proverbs 2, 6 and following says, The Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of justice and pervert, preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity, and every good path. Samson isn't walking in a good path. He has not been walking uprightly. But you and I do not have to do that. God desires to protect us from the sure consequences of sinful choices. He has given us all the wisdom we need to make the right choices and to take the right paths, as well as the protection we will need to walk down those paths. Or maybe you've taken a wrong turn, and like Samson, you've opened up yourself to the enemy. Well, it all starts with a prayer of faith to Jesus Christ, admitting where you are, admitting where you've done, asking for his forgiveness, and asking for his help to deliver you, to put you back on the right road. God bless you. We'll see you back here tomorrow at Swordbox. I wanted to take a moment to thank everybody again for coming to Swordbox Ministries and thank all of you who have responded to Sandy's request that you come and visit us. As a new continuing segment in Swordbox, we're asking for prayer requests and I have been amazed at how many that we have received. So I wanted to conclude today's video with those new prayer requests and also to continue to remember those prayer requests that we had received previously. Father God, I come before you and stand amazed at your power and your majesty, your answer to prayer towards this growth of Swordbox Ministry. God, today we pray for Ray, who is facing knee surgery. God, we also pray for Nick, who needs comfort. We pray for his safety and his well-being. God, you say in your word to be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, make your request known to God and the peace that passes all understanding will be yours in Christ Jesus. God, we pray that you will bring Nikki to that point. We pray that you will direct him to the center of your will so that he can experience that peace. God, we also join with Aria in prayer as she's believing for the means to open a wedding shop. God, we're continuing to pray for Sue with bronchitis, Peggy for renewed health, Anne with the flu, Margarita with surgery for her heart problems, Sarah with lupus, Jane who is experiencing back pain, and Mary Naquin who continues to face a second surgery. God, there's many requests that we have not received, but you know, you know the desires of our heart, and you've known our needs since before the foundation of the earth. God, you said that by his stripes we are healed, and we claim that today. Thank you once again for these amazing things that you're doing with Swordbox. And please continue to give strength to Mickey as he continues daily to try to minister your word. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen.